Okay, so this is um, six. I mean, eight six. We are doing digit and coin problems. So, in the first problem, the first thing we're going to do is we have to identify what our unknowns are. Since we're doing a digit problem, we want to figure out. Um, we're talking about a two-digit number. We're going to call x the tens digit, y the ones digit, or the units digit. Okay. Now. If I'm talking about a two-digit number, if x is the tens digit and y is the ones, we're going to call it the original number xy. Now, Masha, what would the reverse of that be? It would be yx. Yx. Okay. So the first sentence is pretty easy to translate. The sum of two digits is 11. What would that look like, Masha? Uh, x plus y equals 11. Good. Okay. So we have x plus y equals 11. Now, that's very easy to do. The next one, it's almost always going to be the same. The words are there for you to help translate. But before we can do that, we need to come up with a value problem, a, a value statement for each, the original number and the reverse. Now, what is the value of the original number? Now, let's say I had the number, just say, 32. Okay, doesn't this also mean um, 10 times 3 plus 2? Yes. Do you understand the value of 32 is 10 times 3 plus 2? So what would the value of the original number be? Uh, x. Since x is in the tens column. Would it be... No, 10, no. 10x yeah, 10 plus, plus y. Plus y. Now, great. So if that's the case, that's the value of the original problem, okay, let's look at the value of the reverse. What would that be? Uh, it would be 10y plus x. Yes. Do you understand why it's 10y plus x and 10x plus y? Yeah. Because the x is in, in the, the tens, tens column, place. y is in the ones. Okay. So now, I'm ready to translate that second part. Reverse, here it is, reverse is, now here I have the is, but normally, a lot of times they, they forget that. Just remember that is is there. 27, so what do I write for reverse? Uh, if the digits are reverse, then, so it would be y, uh, y, y plus x. Y what? Y. I need a value statement. 10x plus... No, because no. it's the reverse. 10, 10y plus x. 10y plus x, reverse, is... Is my equals, equals. Equals. Now, be careful. It says 27, then there's a more than. What did I tell you about than? You switch. switch. This switch. goes here, and the other one that's on that side goes there. So that 27 is coming over here. And what is the original value? It would be 10x plus y. So those are your two set statements. Now let me go off here. You'll see it right here. They pull out the words. Reverse. What are we putting down for reverse? Uh, 10x plus, 10y plus x. 10y plus x is? Equals 10x plus y plus 27. Perfect. And those are your two equations. Now we get one of the variables alone y equals 11 minus x, and we do substitution. Okay. I'm going to distribute. We end up with 110 minus 9x. Get the x's all alone on one side. Subtract the 38s, move them over to the number side. Divide 18 on both sides, and x is equal to 4. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I got it. Okay, hold on. So now we, we found the first digit. That's the x. The tens digit is 4. Now I go back to either original equation. I can use this, which is too difficult, complicated. I can use this. But isn't this the same thing as this? Mm -hmm. So we're going to use that. y equals 11 minus x. y equals 11 minus 4. y equals 7. 
So this is seven. And now, um, what was the original number? The original number was X, so it would be 47. 47, good. Now, go back to the story. We said the original number, the original number, four and seven, did they add up to 11? Yes. Okay, if the digits are reversed, okay, 74, the new number, 74, is 27 more than the original. Yes, it works. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so I'm going to give you one to practice on your own. Got it. And tell me if you get it. Now, the first time, it's going to be tricky. The second time, you don't have to write all that, the original number, the value of the original. You can just start getting to the point where you are translating. Mm -hmm. You always need to do identify your unknown. We're going to call X the tens digit and Y the ones digit. Okay, pause the recording and see if you can do the next one on your own. So it would be original number, it would be X, Y. Good, the original number will be X, Y. What's the reverse, the reverse of that? would be Y, X. Good. Y. Okay. X. What is the first equation that says the sum of two digits is 6? So then that would be x plus y equals 6. Perfect. x plus y equals 6, and then the reverse of that would be... Well, no, oh, don't no. worry about it. No. Now, value statements. Tell me about the value of the original number. Uh, the value would be 10x plus y. Perfect. And the reverse value? The reverse... Uh, 10x plus y. The reverse value would be 10y plus x. Good. Okay, now, are you ready to write the next equation? Uh, yes, reverse is 36 more than the original. No, start with reverse. reverse. Oh, yes, yeah, start, start with reverse, sorry. Reverse is 36 more than the no. original. No, but what do you put for reverse? Reverse would be 10y plus x. 10y plus x. 10y plus x, which then would equal 10x plus y plus 36. Yes, and you have to reverse it like that, put that 36 at the end, because if it says less than... That's what's going to change. That is going to 36 less than. That 36 is the negative. Do you understand? Yeah. When it's plus, it doesn't make as much, it doesn't matter as much, but later. And now we're going to get in, get the variable alone. Distribute. Simplify. You can do it just on your own. X alone, and you should end up with one for the tens digit. And if one is the tens digit, I come back to my y equals six minus x. That means the second digit will be five. The, y, the ones unit will be five. So my original number was 15. Now, my PowerPoint doesn't do that, so but I do want you guys to make sure and write the original number. Okay? Okay, by the third and fourth time, you should be able to, you should only have to really write this section, whoops, sorry about that. Um, identify your unknowns, the first equation, the second equation, and start solving them. You shouldn't have to do everything else. Yeah. Um, you know, but I just wanted to go through that. All right, the second kind of problem we did were coin and digit problems. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, okay. So there's a couple different ways to solve coin and digit problems. Sometimes they're translations and others, we can solve them like with the box. Now, as you kind of get to know the box, eventually you can get away from the box. Um, okay, first, what are our unknowns? Uh, our knowns, N equals the number of nickels. And D is dimes. dimes. Yes. Okay, now they're really kind of giving us two statements here. And they're giving us a quantity statement, a, qu 
quantity statement, and they're giving us a money statement. So in the quantity statement, we know that that says 13 coins. We know, how. what kind of equation could I make out of that? Uh, equal 13. Well, here, let me make the box. So if you don't see it automatically, let's make the box. And when they're giving you amount and, and oops, here. So just like in 8.4, it was amount times a unit. And in this case, our unit is money is equal to the product. Okay. And then we did this one right here, which was, um, so I'm going to call this nickels, this dimes. Okay, do we know, and remember, this is our sum. Where does that 13 go? Uh, the 13 will go into the, uh, the sum, sum of the, the amount. amount. Good. Now, do we know how many nickels? No. So, so we, we put, put N. N. Do we know, put, know how many dimes? No, so we put, we D. put D. So there's going to be, remember, this is a sum. There's equation number one. N plus, N D, plus D, D equals 13. Now, the other one, what is the value of a nickel? Uh, the value of 5 cents? 0 0.05. Oh, yeah. Zero. And what is the value of a dime? It's 0.1. Good. So I multiply across 0 0.05 N. 0 0.1 D. Now, I have one more thing. I, altogether, it makes a dollar. So my total of 5 cents times the number of nickels and 10 cents times the number of dimes equals 1. But wouldn't it go into here because that's money? No, because this is just unit, how much per each. This is how much altogether, right? The 13 coins equal the $1. Mm, okay, 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 yeah. So my other sentence is 0 0.05 plus 0 0.1D equals 1. For whatever reason, I like to do these. Wouldn't it be 0.05N? Yes, we do need the N there. I like to do these as, as elimination. Now, first thing I want to do is get rid of this decimal. So I'm going to multiply by 100. And that will give me 5N plus 10D equals 100. I'm going to make it a little d. Is that clear? Yes. And the top one, I need an additive inverse. So I'm going to multiply by negative 10. Negative 10N minus 10D equals 130, negative 130. Can you come to the main office? Okay. Yes. You with me? I'm yeah. getting rid of these two. I get negative 5N equals negative 30. Divide by 5, negative 5, divide by negative 5, and n equals 6. Negative, a positive 6. So if this is 6 nickels, then how much is this? Then that would be uh, the 7. 7. So these are very easy to use the box. As you start to get to know what to put in all the boxes, eventually you start realizing, oh, this is one sentence, this is the other. The more you know the box, yeah. the more you can get away from it. Mm -hmm. But you should make sure that you know how to use and it. And do you leave the middle uh, bottom box? Just yeah, empty? you don't really need it. It's for nothing. I mean, later we're going to use it, but we don't really need it. And so then, like, all the 8, 5, and 8, 6 will be on the oh, 4th or 8, 6 will be on the test? Quiz, yeah. Quiz. It'll be a quiz. It's a quiz. But it's, it says 6, 1, 6, 3. That's quiz 6163 and the word problems from 85 through oh, 84. Okay. I'm just throwing them on. Okay. Do you want to try this one? Yes. Sir. Okay, pause the recording and try this one. I'm going to make my box and then you guys can get going. It truly has 19 coins in Thank you.
Oopsie, that didn't look good. Okay, now check your work in the box. Should have looked like this. And your equation should have been d plus q equals 19 and 0.1d plus 0.25q equals 3.85. I'm multiplying by 10. No, no by 100. And this, I'm going to multiply by negative 10. Should have had negative 10d minus 10q equals negative 190. And this one's going to be 10d plus 25q equals 385. Now these cross cancel, these Lucy, clear out. Fifteen Q equals five minus zero is five. Be careful, I would just do this up right side up. I get myself confused. It'd be two eighty five. Two eighty five, three eighty five, that's two hundred. Okay, 195. Yes. So it's 195 divided by 15. And what did you get? Uh, here, I haven't divided it by 15. Yet. Q goes, is it 33? 13. 13. Yes. Okay, so if this is 13, then I had 6 here. 6 dimes and 13 quarters. Okay, now that's one kind of coin problem. The other type of coin problem that you're going to see is going to have translations. So it doesn't work with the box. This works because it's amount and dollar value. Okay? <clears throat> Let me see if I have another one more in here that's from the book. Ticket problems, exactly the same way. So then here, can I just, like, yeah. uh, with the universal entity tickets, so it would be uh, amount times price equals product, so then it would be mm -hmm. sales matinee tickets for $5, so uh, amount times, so it would be 5 and then 650 total would be 195 and R, how many each have are sold, uh, one th well, 1,110, mm -hmm. total value would be M5. And we're calling five, M and regular. And then Are they calling them X and Y? So I do suggest you stay with M and R. To make so when you get your answer in the end, you know what you get. Yeah, so then it'll be 5X right <coughs> here and then 6.5Y. Yes. And then you clear. And then you do all that. Mm -hmm. So take a problem down. Okay, these are going to be on any kind of algebra test, any algebra placement, SAT. You will see them all over the place. Oh, I see either or ten of them. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the last one I want to show you is not really in here. It was, they were in our homework. So let me, okay, I'm going to push pause. The last type of problem is what we see. This is a lot like number seven. So I'll show you number eight and you guys do number seven. So the problem is it's not talking about amount and dollar value. A vending machine takes only nickels and dimes. At the end of the day, there were three times as many nickels as dimes and a total of $25. How many of each coin were in the machine? First thing we do is we have to identify our unknowns. Um, what are we talking about? So we don't know how many, so nickels, so N equals amount. Nickels, N. let's call N nickels, and let's call D, D dimes. dimes, okay? 
Okay, so we know it says at the end of there were three times as many nickels as dimes and a total of $25. Give me a value statement for, for the money. N plus D equals 25. Okay, be careful because that's close. That would be more like 25 coins, but you're very close. N plus D. So it would be 0.5 N plus... 0 0.05. 0 0.05 N. And a lot of people make a mistake because they put 0.5 N. Plus 0 0.1 point. D. This is a money statement. It's 5 cents times a certain number of nickels plus 10 cents times a certain number of dimes equals $25 total. So you need those money values before every variable. And then the other equation is translating. There were three times as many nickels as dimes. Now, this gets confusing. A lot of the kids are doing 3n equals d. They're just looking at this and doing 3n equals d. That's not how it goes. But as many. It says there's three times as many nickels as dimes. What do we have more of? Uh, three nickels. times as many nickels as dimes. Nickels. So nickels, go here. nickels, when it says you have... Whatever you have more of, you write that, that variable down and say nickels equals. Now, what's the other quantity we're talking about? Uh, dimes. So how am I going to show it? Three, three times as many dimes, three. nickels as dimes. 3D. Three, 3D, three three and there are your two equations. Mm. Does that make sense? And then I it's, would... it's almost, and then I would clear this. Oh, yeah. And multiply then... by 100. 5N plus 10 D be five. equals 25. No, wouldn't it be uh, 250? Yeah, 2,500, sorry, right. Okay, and then we're substituting in. So 5 what times 3D, right? Well, this is supposed to be 10 D. And so we can do this in two ways. I can do... Um, Okay, n equals 3d. So I could do that here. Okay. And do 5 times 3d plus 10d equals 2,500. That becomes 15d equals 2,500. Divide by 15, divide by 15. We know it would be 15d plus 10d. So then it would be 25D. Oh, 25D, sorry. 25D, 25D, 25 and 25 this D. equals D goes 100? Yes, D goes 100. There we go. So D equals 100. And then we can substitute that in. Into here. N equals 3 times 100, which is N equals... 300. 300. So this is 300 and 100. Okay, did that make sense? Yes, it did. Okay. Um, so, get going on your homework. That's 8-6. We will have a quiz this week.